getting a passport forces us to think about identity for everyone and what it means for the government to insist that we conform to his organizational DNA of the binary ethnicity and race. And when we do not amplify our voices in policy and regulatory environments and insist that this sort of damaged cellular part of us is healed or replaced once and for all, many people lose and are lost. I want to introduce our membership to one of our partners who helps us help you on the colleges and campuses around the United States. And the first portfolio is called the Parity Portfolio, which is based on gender and looking at gender criteria. But we also started a second portfolio this past year that's called our Diversity and Inclusion Strategy. One of the things I've discovered is whether you're in a nonprofit or a for-profit, a corporation or a school, there's this amazing space where people make a decision to break down or break through. When you hear a pastor saying something like this during a fiery 55-minute sermon, uh, and he says he was speaking extemporaneously, that he didn't really mean it, what do you think? I would say is Jesus wouldn't have preached that sermon. What was chilling to me was hearing the members of the congregation laugh and say amen and really sort of be in concert with what the minister was saying. My ministry is really simple. I believe that in every wall there is a door. Hope, not harm. Love, not hate. Destroy every barrier between us, every dividing wall of hostility. Every experience that I've had at MIT, with the Birthing of Giants program at Harvard, with the fellows who came there from the Victory Fund to decide how state and local officials can best serve their constituencies, to the work that I did in corporate America as a senior executive and as an entrepreneur. Every experience I've had has demonstrated to me that what really matters in the world is inclusion and equity and access. If you don't have those things, the world doesn't work right. Someone suffers and someone wins. Most of my professional work, while traditional in the duties assigned, has been at the contested edges, the places where people are not sure they want to be. I consider that to be one of the most fortunate aspects of my career creating the safest, most inclusive, most tolerant and accepting environments for people around the world. The ultimate goal is that all of our work is organized around the central principle of human dignity. I've been fortunate in that I've worked in more than 85 countries in the course of my career. And what I've discovered in working in all of those places is that to be successful, you have to let the people who live in those places and work in those places and grow up in those places tell you what they need, how they need help, how they need support, and how to move forward. I, I realized how sad it was that we stigmatized one another around something that was so enriching and helped us feel so much one with one another. So I'm here today standing sort of in this juxtaposition of the celebration of war and the celebration of peace. And my longing is that maybe we could just bring everyone together. There wouldn't be this grassy knoll between us. That would be amazing. The ultimate goal is that all of our work is organized around the central principle of human dignity. What really matters in my life is what kind of impact and relationship can I have with people? Does it help them or does it harm them? And I want to choose to help.